So today we'll be going for Slav defense, which starts with d4. I played d5. It was basically a game of 10 plus, I guess it was 10 plus 0, 10 plus 5. I guess it was 10 plus 0. And uh, my opponent played knight to f3. Usually I avoid showing my own games because every game has a flaw. But uh, uh, I only pick and choose some of my games which I feel um, like uh, are you know worth discussing. So anyways, so we go for Slav defense and my opponent goes c4. So this is our typical Slav defense structure. And uh, after knight f6, knight to c3 was played. Now here, uh, there's a way that you can play that in the Slav defense while playing as black, right now four moves have been played like uh, one, two, three, and four. And black has played three moves, one, two, three. So on the fourth move, you can go and capture the pawn. And this structure is called as, <clears throat> this is called as the Alepin Slav, Alepin variation of the Slav defense. Now the whole idea is, we have taken a pawn and uh, which the move which looks very normal here right now is to play pawn e4 because right now the d pawn was the center pawn and if you remove it the whole idea is you give e4 square but this is not the best approach from white because suddenly we have b5 and now we create a pawn chain and we defend everything if you now try to exploit me by playing a4 just make sure you never play move like a6 because that's very bad a6 is just you not know, terrible and now you cannot take because of the hanging rook so what is the right way to play you the right way is to play just b4 kick the knight knight goes away trying to take the pawn and here you can just continue by playing pawn to e6 protecting the pawn and not taking it i'm not in a favor of taking e4 because after you take here, they will take here and the knight is coming out in the game. But if you go back a bit, if you just play e6 and if they now protect their pawn by pushing it, knight d5, bishop c4, the whole idea is this knight is a very bad piece. Pawns are equal, everything is equal. So suppose you play something like pawn e5 and to move the knight out, white is going to you know do a lot of maneuvers. So the knight moved from here to here. So again, it goes here, again, it goes here. But just to come in the game, the knight is going zigzag here and there. And now it will be finding some square. This is one way to play in the in this variation. Let's go back a bit. If after you capture the best way to respond to this move is to play a4 directly, not allow black to gain the queen side space and which happened in the game. So I played bishop to f5. Now usually when the c pawn has moved up, bishop f5 should not be played because of queen b3 ideas, but only because I'm having a pawn right now which controls b3 square, queen b3 cannot be played, so bishop f5. And after this bishop f5, bishop g5 was played. And this is a new move. Like it has been played a lot many times um, in maybe rapids, but uh, usually what people do is here, they either play bishop f4 or something like pawn up. The whole idea with bishop to g5 is that right now the bishop f5 and knight f6 are controlling e4 square. And by suppose if I try to kick, my opponent would take, take and play pawn e4. And they want to take the pawn after pushing e4 and trying to gain space on the center. So that was the logic of bishop g5. Here I thought for a few uh, seconds and then I just understood that the fight is of e4. So I played knight e4, not allowing them to play pawn e4 themselves. Now, if they take me fine, I will take by the bishop and completely fine setup. The right now the bishop is also slightly loose. My opponent played e3, knight takes bishop, knight takes knight, and now I can try to give my opponent kind of a IQP structure by playing pawn to e5. e6 can be played, but it's important to not allow um, counterplay because right now in the center, opponent has two pawns, you have one pawn. 
And if you divide the board again into three parts, on the F file, G file, H file, the pawns are equal from both sides. On the queen side, the point is black is having a majority of four versus two. So we are having four pawns on the queen side, black has only two. So eventually the right way will be to push pawns and that happened in the end game. But if you notice right now, white has a central majority of pawns. So what white is aiming for? White is aiming for to achieve pawn d5, d6, things like that. I played this e5 and then I just traded off. Understand the point? He can take by the pawn, but then the pawn is very isolated. And we have done class of isolated queen pawns, right? IQP structure. So this is one of the examples of IQP. In the game, however, my opponent took by the knight, which I feel is the right way to capture. I played bishop g6 and bishop to c4. So my opponent got the pawn back finally. And now let's try to understand. So let me play one more move, bishop e7. Okay, here bishop c5 is a slightly better move. Bishop e7 I played. My main plan was to put the bishop on f6. Castles and castles. And now we'll wait here. So we have passed the opening phase. And now we have entered the middle game uh, position. So whenever I recommend, like this is my personal recommendation, whenever you play any kind of middle game, always start by understanding pawn structures. This is very, very important for you guys. So again, on the king side, the pawns are in the same pattern. So nothing happening on the queen side. Center, the point is there's a pawn majority in the center, but that's only one pawn. Over here, we are having three versus two. But right now, my opponent has this structure and I want to uh, talk about this structure a bit. So right now, what this, what are the weak squares around the queen side? One of you can raise the hand and tell me. Hmm? B3, A, A2, uh, D, and D2. So? Yes, Adav. So B3, A, A2, C2, and B4. Very good. So that's the complete answer. B4 is also weak. That's what we have learned just now. So that B4, the... B3 and then A2 and C2 are the weak squares. Yes, exactly. So B4 is also weak. So when the pawn has been pushed here, remember it's not connected. It's very important. I'm stressing on it a lot many times. So this is a new kind of pawn structure that you guys are learning today. Maybe you have seen this before. This is very common. But whenever the pawn is on A4 and there's no pawn here, if the pawn can go here, if there's a C2 pawn, yeah. then I cannot say B4 is weak because he can obviously go front and try to guard the B4 square. But right now, the B4 is obviously weak and I want to place my knight at some point on B4. So I'll show you the game now. He played, okay, my, the, my opponent did not play this move, but I think because he was having the central majority, so my opponent should have started playing, thinking of playing F4, F5, E4, E5, things like that. Because if you're having a central majority, if you're not pushing the pawns, I'm not so sure how do you deal with that. Maybe my opponent was a bit scared of this annoying pin, but I guess after king h1, f4, f5, e4, e5, it is a decent way to play. Anyways, my opponent played queen to b3 with the idea of hitting on b7 and putting pressure on here. I played queen b6, very obvious, and a5. So now my opponent is pushing the spawn all by itself and these squares are further weakened. I captured the queen, bishop captures, and then because the bishop was right now controlling a6, I could not play knight a6, but now? So knight a6. Knight a6. The idea is to go b4 at some point. My opponent played bishop to c2. Now try to understand here. If you look at the minor piece composition from both the sides, Black has a bishop pair. That's why white really wants to get rid of the light square bishop, which is having the best diagonal right now. If I capture, they will be happy to capture and the game will go on. Okay. The knight will also control the b4 square yeah. a bit and the game is very drawish. So here, now this is the moment you should not allow your opponent to get comfortable. Okay. So here I played the move pawn c5. To control b4 square, at the same time, he cannot take. 
That's very important because if it takes, I take the knight and now they are having double attacks. So, so it will be, so white will be a piece down. They cannot save both of them. Okay. In the game, however, my opponent played knight f5, the best move. If you look at my pawn structure, again, it's similar to white's, but I cannot say that this square is weak. The reason is I'm having the a7 pawn, which in my opponent's case was not there, but I'm losing the control of b5 and d5 squares. It goes without saying guys, because my pawn is on a dark square. It means light squares are vulnerable. So my opponent should have thought like, like he could have gone knight d5 to put more and more pressure. Putting on the light squares was the main plan from white, which did not happen. That's why I'm, you know, stressing on this principle a lot. Right now my bishop on e7 is hanging. So bishop f6, rook to d1 and knight to b4, achieving that beautiful knight on b4, which cannot be removed. Bishop e4 putting pressure on b7 and rook to d8. The whole idea is they cannot capture, obviously, because the knight is hanging. So knight went back and now my opponent wants to capture b7. So I took takes bishop is hanging. C5 is hanging. Very obvious bishop e7 and pawn to h3. Now, again, you have to understand that when you try to launch the attack, you do it in a way that first of all, you prepare for no back rank threats because the only open file right now is a D file. Like the contest is going that who can take the D file in a better way. So right now, both the players are taking the D file, but I cannot try to jump in a very aggressive manner because I will be having some back rack weakness. Now question comes that, okay, my opponent played H3. I can also play H6 or maybe G6 or maybe F6. I mean, F5, anything. The right way to respond to this idea is that you have to again, look at the pawn structure. My opponent is having a majority in the center. And I have to assume that my opponent at some point will try to play this E4, E5 stuff. So I have to control the square. So I started the move F5, a tempo on the night, avoiding the back ranks. And now my opponent can never play pawn to E4. Knight goes back, knight to d3. Again, guys, remember I said at the beginning of the class, because there's a pawn on the dark square, this light square is automatically weak. b2 is hanging. So my opponent played this. I played bishop f6 and my opponent played king to f1. So here everything is going in, like black is improvising the position very slowly. Nobody is pawn up or pawn down. But black has just improved the knight from a normal b8 square to d3. And the whole idea is now king f1 was a blunder. Who can show me why it was a blunder? It is black to play. Sir? Yeah. Sir, can we take the b2 pawn? Sir? We can take the b2 pawn after yeah. the knight takes. So I have a longer answer. Yes. Yes. So, so I want. I will go knight b two. He will take me. Then I will take helm. He and will... you're up a pawn, and right? Up a pawn, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's... also, his his knight is pinned. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of the issue. So once you control the squares, so this game was not about you know, finding tactics or something. It was only about finding weak squares and trying to control more and more. Okay. So now I played knight to b2. Knight takes, uh, so, okay. Rook takes, rook. Rook takes, knight b2 takes. Rook goes here and bishop a5. My opponent played this to attack my bishop. At the same time, he's trying to take the pawn. Bishop b4 only move. King goes there. b5. Knight to e5, rook check, and pawn e5. So I have to, I have want to stop here at the moment. So you have to understand why this check is important. Remember, whenever you are having a majority on one of the sides, you want to push pawns. You should not allow the opponent king to participate. If you allow that, 
maybe it will be winning but uh, i'm not so sure okay so many times it ends up in draw but why to take risk if you are winning in a very direct manner why should we try to complicate stuff right so you should not this is a very important thing in rook and games if you can stop the opponent's king to participate just do it every time it works a5 and my opponent played knight to c6 and i'm having three passers so i just played a4 <laughs> sacrificing upon takes takes rook takes now we have to assess the situation will this be a winning chance so after this my opponent was having this i go here and, and then he goes here and then it's basically a draw i cannot try to convert it because uh, there's only one pawn so if you are having a connected passer remember always protect it i played rook d5 the only move okay. my so opponent played e4 now i'll ask you guys in the chat can you guys please show me what will you me play and in this position? Uh, me and anu are together what do we do you can share me one answer by discussing that one it is black to play how do you respond here Yes, very good, Shadak. Shadak, I think you should think of the follow-up as well. Because if you play that move, you are having a specific plan. You should think what is the plan. So the whole point is that remember, this is like Black's plan is to push pawns on the queen side. And White is aiming for bringing the king as close as possible. Okay. So if you just imagine if you take, which is... Which looks like the obvious choice, but then the whole point think... is king takes, and if you go and there, then, uh, and... there, king will start, king will coming, start in. coming in. Okay, so that won't be working. Here you have to play rook c5. Pose if he takes. Okay, and now the main move is pawn e3. So pawn e3. They go here, and now a2. They go here and now rook check. That's a way to convert. They take, you convert and completely winning position. In the game, however, it did not happen because my opponent just played this move and now it's very simple conversion. Takes, takes, check, takes, takes and we are now in this kind of end game. Now, one theory that you have to know again that whenever you play this kind of pawn structure, Suppose if you are having pawns like this and the king is in the middle, okay, just imagine anywhere, I right? can place it anywhere like this, maybe. Now, this yeah. is, there's a rule now, which you have to know. The rule is that you see the backward pawn and you form a square towards this pawn. So like once, two, three, four, and then you just form a square. If this square is able to reach the last rank, then one of the pawn will convert. So suppose if it is white to play, white can play pawn to f5. And now if you just form the same square, it reaches the eighth rank and white wins the game. In this case, suppose right now, the whole point is if it is white to play, white can play any move. It will never be a victory because the square is not getting formed. Now let's go back. Remember in this kind of structure, the king should be in the middle of the pawns. In this game, what happened? The king was here. He wants to take. So first of all, we have to discourage that. So now he cannot take. King c4 is not possible because of a2, king b3, a1 queen. So king c3, and now you don't push anything. The whole point is you, king. you cannot uh, you cannot win this because the square is just reaching the second rank. It's not reaching the first rank. So the point is you cannot push pawns, but at the same time, you can obviously move the king, which happened. And after this, there are many ways to win. By the way, you can just play this, that everything is winning. I just played the safest and my opponent designed here. So the whole point is that uh, this game was basically focused around how do you find weakness, you know, the square weakness. And that has been the topic of this month, right? In every single session, we have been trying to focus on the same aspect of the game, 
हाउ डू यू फाइंड वीक स्क्वेयर